I'm here with my husband today. We have four grown children and we have eight precious little grandchildren. And I think that it gives you freedom in Congress to do things of significance if being in Congress is not the biggest thing in your life, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So I want to uh, stay in Congress. Of course, this is an election year, and I'm working very hard to stay there. But it is really uh, very meaningful to do something of significance. Uh, I would say to you that when I agreed to sponsor the marriage amendment, uh, I had no idea what was ahead of me. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's been quite a ride, I'll tell you. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is the politics of this issue are absolutely brutal. Uh, in the state of Colorado, uh, we have some uh, billionaires and millionaires, and I mean that literally, who are very concerned uh, that I would be reelected to Congress and carry the marriage amendment again. Uh, in Colorado, they have been investing millions and millions of dollars to take over the state house, the state senate. They elected their guy to the United States Senate and they're looking very closely at the governor's race and doing everything they can to take that one too. So the stakes are very high, uh, but as we face the issues that we're facing today, I don't think there's anything more important out there than the marriage issue. And I have been a pro-life activist most of my adult life. I care very deeply about the sanctity of life, but this issue that's in front of us today is critically important. You know, I, I am a uh, amazed when I hear Robbie George speak and when I hear Maggie, uh, I hang on every word they say. And I believe the thing that Robbie said recently when he was talking to members of Congress about how if we have gay marriage, our religious liberties are gone. I think the American people need to know that. And you also need to know that we can have the facts on our side, we have the truth on our side, but unless we get into this political arena and do the things that need to be done to elect candidates who have the worldview that we do, we are not going to be successful. The stakes are incredibly high, and I have become a target. Uh, I am a poster child for 527s. I don't know if all of you know what that means, but that's referring to campaign finance, where candidates like me, go out and raise money. There's limits on what you can give in the, the general, in the primary election. But people funding a 527 in Colorado can put up two and a half million dollars in just a few weeks to put against a candidate like me. And as Maggie and I were talking before we came on, I wasn't attacked on marriage because the people in Colorado believe that marriage should be defined as a union between a man and a woman. And in fact, it's on the ballot this year for a constitutional change. But they attack me on veterans issues, on uh, issues with the elderly. The veterans issue is just amazing to me. I'm the only member of Congress that has an enlisted son serving in the United States military. But there are all of these... I'll tell him he got a hand today. He'll appreciate that. But, but they attack you on other issues based upon motions to recommit, uh, based upon motions to recommit with instructions. But you know, when you get a lot of mud thrown at you, two and a half million dollars worth, some of it sticks. And uh, that's what happened to me in my last race. My margin of victory has shrunk. Uh, this year, uh, we'll see what happens with the 527s. They have other issues going on in Colorado. Again, marriage is on the ballot. But you know, when I was uh, in the, the last weeks of my last campaign, you know what I was thinking? Where's our side? What are they doing? And I believe that when you're in a cultural war like this, you have to respond with equal and hopefully greater force if you want to win this battle. But this battle is the most important issue that we face today, and what an honor it has been to serve in the United States Congress and carry the marriage amendment. Uh, last time, uh, uh, we were 54 votes short in this legislative session. That's nine votes more than we had last year, but there is much work to be done. So I hope that you will realize how high the stakes are. The future is grim.
unless we do what we need to do to win this battle, we need to elect people to positions of authority in the states and in the United States Congress, and we need to fight the good fight for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you very much.